Good morning. So in video four, we went over how you can permission your API or set up authorization using the default controls that ApeBase offers you. Now what we're going to do is jump in and look how you can create custom access or custom filters on any record for a specific action to really have a more fine grained control over what types of users are allowed to perform updates or reads on different types of records and resources. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm in my quick start app workspace right now. And one thing I just wanted to show you is that I added an extra field to the brokers table called credits, which is a number type field, right? And so we're just going to use this to make our filter or make our custom access depend on a certain variable for the broker, right? So I'm going to jump over to the API Explorer now, where I've already populated with just some, let's call it a template, right? First off, we have a query, and that query is taking a filter as an argument. Then inside it, we pass that argument to, as the filter on the broker's list query. And then all we care about right now is returning an ID, right? So right down here, we're able to look at this query variable, which is going to be the filter that we are defining. This will make sense why we're doing it as a query um, at the end of the video. So just bear with me for now. But what's cool is just like we could filter any query right here, we can start creating that inside the query variable um, view down at the bottom. So for example, let's say that this filter, one thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to say, okay, well, we want to filter our brokers by ones that have credits greater than no, five. So ones with more credit, more than five credits. So we can run that filter and we have one broker that has more than five credits, right? Well, let's say that we wanted a conditional type filter. We would say or and or and and both accept objects um, to which, you know, if it's an and, every single object has to have a return truthy for the specified thing with when it's an or one of them has to be specified truthy. So let's just throw, one second, let's just throw this in here. So this is the broker, can either have five credits, or let's give it the next value. We can say, let's see that they have listing, or the user, okay, let's say that their email, right, uh, ends with, user email ends with and we're just gonna do a base.co for this right so we run that cool and we got a lot more now right so what's this doing this filter is going through and saying okay well we want to filter by people that have more than five credits or their name ends with a base right and so one thing that's important, or two things that are important about this, is one, we're looking up a field property right here. The next one, we're going into a relation and new filtering by the relation, right? Now, why is this relevant to roles and permissions, or specifically creating custom access for a role to a different, to a specific table? Well, if we wanted to, we could take this right here, right? And the same way it performed on this list of brokers, we could go into our settings, we could specify on our roles that, well, this is the broker role. And when the broker role is interacting with or reading the uh, broker's resource, we could say that has a custom filter on that. And we drop that in there and this would work, meaning that it would scope the records that this broker has access to reading um, per the filter that we just defined and as it behaved within the API Explorer. One thing that's important to note here as well is that if we go back to the API Explorer, let's say that we wanted to do it to where, okay, well, we're going to do this for uh, listings, right? So let's change a few things here. First thing was that we're going to change this to listing list. That's going to be the type, which means that then we have to change the type of the filter to a listing filter because all arguments have to be typed. Cool, we'll still leave it as my filter, right? And so what we're gonna specify here is that, okay, um, we're gonna do it to where if the listings broker has more than five credits, whoop, 
Let's just do it like that. Cool. So if the listings broker has more than five credits, then they'll be able to update the listing. The second condition that we can do is or if the listing, let's just use the autocomplete here. So if I just press option space, it's going to open the list of autocomplete. So we're going to look at that. Or if the status of the listing equals, uh, I think draft would be one, right? So if a listing is not published or the broker has more than five credits, they'll be able to update the listing. That's what we're going to use it for. And one other thing that we can do here is we can say, okay, well, we are, what we can do is we can do a kind of an aggregated one to where we'd say, okay, well, if the broker, let's go back to the broker. Oh, one second. Boom. If the broker's listings. And so since this is a collection, we can specify whether some of these values are truthy, if every value has to be truthy, or if none of the values have to be truthy, right? So let's say that if any of the listings price or let's say if any of the broker's listings price is greater than greater than or equal to one million dollars or one million right then this filter will will trigger right so once again we're just kind of playing around here but you get the idea of the level of detail that you can go into so a good example of this would be imagine if you're building a service like Reddit or something, you know, or something like Hacker News to where based on the number of karma points or the number of yeah, karmic type points the logged in user has, maybe they can perform a certain action, right? All those types of custom permissions can be built in to the filters to show what type of actions they can do on what types of resources. Once again, though, if I just take this or let's actually run this. It works can, because it's a strong filter and no one has a listing of more than a hundred or a million dollars, so no items returned. But we could take this query or this list filter, we could copy it, go right back into our settings, open up roles, click on the broker's role, and then let's say that on the listings to update the listing, we want to put on a custom filter, drop that in there, and it's good to go. All right. I hope this gave you a really good idea of how flexible the roles and permissions or authorization system is in APACE, where by using these types of custom filters, you can really you know, give a fine, fine grain control permission over what records different roles are allowed to perform actions on based on the attributes of any related record, right? So hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day and looking forward to seeing you again in future videos.